Hi students, this is Mr. Epperson and this video is on heating and cooling curves. One of the things that I really think is fascinating and uh, love learning about is um, lava. And I think lava is just one of those kind of crazy things that we don't really think uh, we can understand exactly how it works because um, it just looks so bizarre. It almost looks like it's a, an animated movie or something. Um, but it's, it's a real thing and it's happening on our planet all the time. In fact, you can go and see these places um, just by uh, walking around somewhere in Hawaii and going to one of the active volcanoes there. Um, and you can watch what is really brand new earth forming and uh, see, you know, the, the, the newest um, part of the planet um, before your very eyes. And um, one of the things that's interesting about that is just thinking what lava actually is. Um, it's this very uh, all-consuming like substance, but um, though it is very hot, it's really just the same stuff as everything around it. So you see in these uh, pictures here, you've got rock that they're standing on and a red substance here and red here and more, you know, crazy redness here. And then even in this video, um, you've got almost like a, a plume coming out of uh, the side of the wall there of the cliff and um, pouring into the ocean. Um, but where is that going? It's just going to the bottom of the ocean and becoming solid rock. This is the liquid form of rock. Um, the states of matter that we've been studying have... Uh, application to basically every form of matter that you can think of. Um, the exception that you might be wondering about is, well, you know, aren't there certain things that don't, you know, if you heat them up, they don't change phase, they just burn? That's true, but really the only reason that they're burning is because um, there's other things that they uh, have to interact with that will burn them, like oxygen. Um, if you get something hot enough and don't uh, allow it to get exposed to oxygen or allow some of the molecules within itself to uh, further cause more chemical reactions to change the substance, you can, in theory, make anything change from solid to liquid or liquid to gas. And um, though there is a couple other states of matter above uh, gas and below um, solid, um, we don't really study those in this class um, at least currently. And so um, those three states of matter are um, true for everything. And we usually use water as a proxy or something that we look at first before we uh, study the other things. So our first thought about how matter um, responds to a change in temperature we saw in a lab that we did. Um, first, uh, students look, watched and examined how um, ice, as it melted, became uh basically warmer ice and eventually water and then that water got warm and what was interesting is as we tracked the temperature using a temperature probe that was in there just a thermometer stuck in there throughout the time we were able to come up with a graph that looked something like this and this is an interesting bit of information because most people when they think about heating up water just think it's a straight line so what we're going to do here is show you a general uh, shape of the states of matter um, in what's called a heating curve. And so the way that a heating curve works is that you plot the data like we've done and you watch as the temperature rises um, with the heat that you add. Remember, adding heat is not the same as adding temperature. It's just adding energy in the form of thermal energy. And so we're adding heat, but we're watching what the temperature does. And very confusingly, um, the more heat you add, once you reach this point, you actually aren't going to increase the temperature. You're going to keep it steady until something else happens. And then there's another similar plateau um, right here, kind of like a uh, it's a hill and then a flat level. Um, and uh, that's uh, repeated again. And so to understand that a little better, what we're going to do is draw it out. And I'd like you to copy this down. Okay, so now that we're in our graph, I'd like you to make a vertical axis for temperature and a horizontal axis called heat added. And you might notice that this is slightly different from your lab because the heat added part we actually had is time. But if you think about it, that whole time we were there, um, 
all we were doing was adding heat because it was sitting on a burner. So that makes sense to put uh, heat added there instead. And plus, it's important because in other types of situations, we're not going to actually just measure time. We're going to measure um, how much heat you actually put into something. So that is a better metric than just time. But time worked for us um, for just the lab. Okay, so let's do uh, an initial um, step here and just label where all the different states are. Okay, this is solid ice. Here is our liquid water. And this is our gaseous <laughs> yes, gaseous uh, steam. Okay. So those are the three states. So what's this state here? What state is it in? Well, there isn't a secret state that I didn't tell you about. It's basically just ice water. <laughs> That's what it is. It's ice water. And so what is this? This is sort of steam water or like uh, boiling water. As you remember, what's in boiling water? What's in the bubbles of boiling water? It's steam. And that's steam water. So boiling water is sort of steam and ice, uh, sorry, steam and liquid put together. And uh, ice water is ice and, and the water put together. Now, why is that important? Well, here's what the plateau tells us, okay? These different states uh, here are... Um, what's happening to the temperature during the, during the melting point, the melting phase. This we'd call the melting process. And you probably would, would not be surprised by that, but that's what we call that process. If we're gonna go this direction, that's freezing. Okay, so freezing and melting uh, those are the same uh, sort of point on the diagram here, just depending which way you're going. If you're adding heat, then you are melting it. If you're freezing, you'd be taking the heat away. So how about up here? Well, this area is uh, called, if we're going to stick with our colors here, we're going to go this direction. It's called condensation. In this direction, you might not guess it right off the bat, but vaporization. Vaporizing your liquid into gas. So those are the different parts of this graph here. So the big question is, why the, why the line? Why not, why the horizontal line? Why not a steady linear line like we saw for everything? Which by the way, it was linear, it was pretty straight. Um, some people thought it, that line might go up like this and just keep keep accelerating, but that's not actually what we saw. We saw the line go really pretty straight. Um, and that's because all you're doing is adding heat. As long as the addition of heat is consistent, um, what's happening on a molecular level is that those molecules are just speeding up faster. And that will help us understand really what's happening during the melting and freezing ice water phase. During the melting uh, phase, what's happening is you're taking the water that's in um, the, the ice and you're, uh, you're melting it out, but you're melting it out one little bit at a time. It, you can't get it all at once. And as you do that, every bit that you melt takes energy. So if I'm going to take some uh, ice and melt that bit of ice apart, um, that took a certain amount of energy that I could calculate to melt that little chunk of ice here and to turn it into water. If it was um, not given that energy, it would stay ice for forever. Um, and that's how uh, the process of adding heat will actually change a state. It won't just change state because it's sitting around. Um, it has to actually get the addition of heat. 
So um, every time I melt a little bit of that ice away, I have to add more heat. And every time I do that, as long as there's ice there, it takes more and more energy. And as I'm meeting that um, point here, which is the freezing point of water, zero degrees C, as I meet that point, I'm in the process of breaking the bonds that are holding the ice together. And I am now uh, able to allow those uh, atoms, molecules to, or the, just the molecules really, to move freely and slide around each other. So each um, bit of ice that you melt takes energy. Once all that energy has been spent in order to melt every bit of ice, then the water itself can heat up. Just think about it. If there's any piece of ice in there, as long as it's well mixed, there's enough energy in the water to melt the ice further. And if it's not, if there's not enough to melt it further, then the, the water itself can't heat up either. There might be hot spots here and there, but assuming it's well mixed, that whole water sample won't be um, any higher than zero. Now we saw in our lab it was a little higher than zero and there could be calibration issues with our thermometer. It could be not exactly right, um, but more likely the problem with having it just a bit above zero is because we're measuring um, sort of a moving system and it's a little difficult to um, really accurately measure the uh, temperature of the freshly melted ice. We're measuring sort of different samples of water and we're kind of getting an average there. So though it wasn't exactly at zero degrees, um, we, we know um, that that's the case. We also know that there are different things that change the freezing point. So sometimes that's salts that are dissolved in the water. Um, that can change the freezing point. That's why people add salt to roads to get them to melt. Um, that's one of the ways that you can do that. And then another thing is just t is pressure. So um, this always this heating curve for water always works at one atmosphere, which is sea level. Um, we're about sea level um, where we live, but it could be um, especially where it was filmed too, which is right around Aptos. But it was it's maybe a little higher than that. So um, that could uh, play a, a bit of a factor. Pressure matters with where that freezing point uh, is. But that's actually not totally in the scope of this lesson. So once you you break uh, all the bonds necessary, you're still at zero degrees. Now you can start moving up. Okay, so we move up. And then once we get to um, our gaseous state, well, that happens at 100 degrees. And you might say, well, I saw it going into gas form. I saw it, the steam forming earlier on, maybe even at something like 80 degrees. Well, that's probably true. But what you were watching were, again, some of the hot spots that can um, release some of the water into gas state just because it happens to be um, hot enough there in order to turn it into gas. You're not watching some of it evaporating necessarily. You're, you're watching kind of a better understanding would be hot spots and sort of random emission of uh, water vapor as you are in the process of heating it. That will happen. So eventually we get to 100 degrees C where there's, you know, very um, strong boiling. There's some boiling here, but now we're at full boiling. And at this point, the, the weird thing for students is that it does not actually get any hotter. You can add as much energy as you want, but all you're going to do is just make more steam. And that makes sense because what defines water's state is that it's between 100 and 0 degrees C, again, depending on pressure and depending on uh, what's dissolved into it. So uh, as long as it's pure water and we're at sea level, that's where scientists have determined that's where it uh, will boil and as hot as it can get as a liquid and that's where it will freeze and as cold as it can get as a liquid. So those are the different ways that we understand that and why it gets to this point where it's sort of stuck at this line and it can't get any hotter. Um, the reason is every bit of the water, even though it's moving around very, very rapidly and getting, you know, all this energy put into it, all of those particles eventually have to become steam. They'll shoot out and they'll become steam eventually. But in the process of that happening, every time you eject a molecule into steam form, 
And usually, of course, they, they kind of collect them in little bubbles and the whole group goes up. That's why you see a big bubble. And those usually form not just in the center. They're, they're going to form uh, along little cracks in the bottom of glasses. And so um, kind of like if you've ever seen uh, a bubbling soda can or something um, or, or, and you pour it into a glass, you'll see from particular spots on a glass, it usually has bubbles coming out of that little spot and usually what that is is there's a little crack or something on the side and a bubble will form uh, repeatedly in that crack that imperfection so um, all that to say you're going to need to evaporate or you're, sorry you're going to need to boil off and uh, turn into vapor all of the different uh, water molecules that are in liquid form until you can then say you've now changed states of all of your sample You'll take all of your sample as long as you caught it all. We didn't do this in the lab. And then you can start to heat that further. And that's where this line comes from. You can further heat steam all you want because it's just in the next state. You can keep on heating that up and you could make steam extremely hot if you wanted it to, as long as you could keep that heat somewhere um, without it getting lost. And of course, as it's, you know, maybe hits something and cools down, it would become water again. So um, steam is it's something that you could definitely get very, 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 very hot. Um, but once it's uh, only only once it's left the liquid form. Okay, so now that we have all the different uh, parts of the uh, heating curve, does it make sense that um, water can't get any hotter than 100 degrees? and that water can't get any colder than zero as long as it's in liquid form. The reason being, it takes energy to move from state to state. Those are heating curves and cooling curves, and I hope that was helpful.